and welcome everybody to Leslie Said What, uh, the program where you can ask questions, make comments, join the conversation, and we have a big old discussion via Facebook Live. Sometimes it's just often easier for you to have your question discussed out loud for you to get a different perspective um, from other people. So sometimes we don't always have the answers. And I don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm discussing it, I'm hearing it open discussing, openly discussed. It makes it easier for me to understand. So yeah, so that's the whole purpose of this show. Tonight's show hits a little close to home, y'all. I'm not gonna lie to you. It hits a little close to home for me because I am definitely one of those people who um, were smacking myself on the hand for having mental health issues and yet being in the church at the same time and trying to figure out that balance. So a lot of times we either smack ourselves on the hands and say, hey, we don't have enough faith, or we end up getting to the point where we beat ourselves up because, oh, we're not talking to the pastor or we're not talking to God enough or we're not doing this. We're going to address it all tonight, y'all. We're going to address it all tonight. I have two co-hosts with me tonight. I have one is my guest co-host, Miss Nessia Fan, who you guys know from last week, and I had to bring her back because the chemistry, the camaraderie of the two of us together was just golden. Um, and then I also have my amazing brother-in-law, Mr. Harrell Mitchell, who is a state-certified mental health professional that's also going to help address these questions. Now, let me just say that, yes, both of these people do attend church. So it's not like they're coming from the outside. OK, so we're just putting that out there from the beginning. But what I'm going to do first is bring out my co-host for tonight, Miss Nessie Yoffin. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ness. How are you? I'm good, girl. How are you? Doing fantastic. Thank you for having me back tonight. No, it is definitely my pleasure. Ness, like literally our chemistry last week was golden. <laughs> like literally, I just thought it was like literally just went so well. So I had to bring you back, girl. I had to bring you back. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so tonight joining us, Ness, we have Mr. Harrell Mitchell. So I'm going to bring him out in just a second because what you all need to hear first is the question and the reason why I have bugged my poor brother-in-law to come and join us. So again, welcome Ness. <laughs> um, and so the question of the week is, this is what was submitted. Why is mental health not a topic of discussion in the church? And it's often regarded as, oh, you're not praying hard enough. You know, it's one of those questions, yes. Ness. It's one it of those. <laughs> they is. went deep, Ness. They went deep. <laughs> <laughs> they went real deep. So, so to help me and Ness out, I brought a professional along. So here we go. Let's introduce Mr. Harrell Mitchell. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey. Hey, hey. <laughs> Good. We are good. That's good. <laughs> Y'all are so funny. <laughs> I like the energy in here. It's nice. Really, really good energy in this group. In this um in this little show tonight. <laughs> well, nothing but the best with me and Ness. I mean, like that's yeah, right real. Now. It's always energy with us. Always energy with us. Right. Now, if you are watching uh, out there in the audience, feel free to comment at any time. We want you to join the conversation so that it's not us right. working at y'all and preaching at y'all the whole time. Right. So please feel free to join the conversation in the comments. Also, feel free to let us know you're here. Say, hey, we'd like to acknowledge you guys. So go ahead and say, hey, in the comments so we can recognize some of our viewers tonight. <laughs> but like I was telling Ness Harrell, the golden question that came up was about mental health in the church. So I brought you along. Okay. Um, now, the question that was addressed is why is it not a topic of discussion in the church? And why is it often regarded as something that is basically like a taboo subject or yeah. um, a hoax or whatever? So that is the question we're going to be dealing with tonight. We're going to okay. hear from our audience real quick. Let's see who's here. Who's If you're here, say, hey. Oh, Victoria Hardy. Hey, girl. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if you're, like I said, feel free to say, hey, and join the conversation tonight. Okay. All right, Harrell. So I'm going to pull up this question. Okay. 
And we're gonna let you go first, and me and Ness gonna chime in. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna leave the the question up for tonight. All right, Harrell, you want to go ahead and start with us? Yeah. Um, why is mental health not a topic of discussion in the church, and is often regarded as "oh, you're not praying hard enough"? For one, um, I think is not a topic because a lot of people are not educated on mental health. If you um, if you bring up mental health in church, the first thing one of the first things people are going to say is you have a demon. <laughs> right. That's one of the first things they're going to say. Right. They're going to they're, they're going to refer to the scriptures. Hold on, I got them. They're going to refer to Mark. I'm sorry. They're going to refer to Matthew twelve forty five. This talks about the man that had the um he had the seven he had the seven legions, and Jesus asked him what was the name, and he said legions because it was many of them. Mm-hmm. Then they're going to go to Acts. 19 and 16 and then they will go through daniel chapter 4 talking about nebuchadnezzar how he lost his mind and he lost his mind because he thought he was trying to overthrow the king or he thought he had more power than the king something to that reference Mm -hmm. and he lost his mind Mm -hmm. those are some of the first things people are going to say they're going to go straight to the i know they're going to go to one about the legions and then in acts 19 16 they talk about the man that had the it talks about other man that had the seven spirits jump in him because they say he was empty. Say he wasn't praying and fasting and doing mm-hmm. what he's supposed to do enough. And so, and so the seven spirits went and got more spirits and came back and jumped in him. And that's what people are going to refer to inside the church. Right. And a lot of people do that because for one, uh, no, nobody really says I'm going, I mean, people do now. A lot of people don't go to school and say, I'm going to be a mental health counselor. Or I'm gonna be a I'm gonna be a psychiatrist. Or I mean, you do have some people, but not in our community, not in the our church. Mm-hmm. It's not a lot of black psychiatrists, black psychologists, and things like that. But it, it, it's growing now because now more people are taking time out with mental health. Back in the day, um, everybody had this thing like get over it. Don't worry about it. Don't put too much stress on it. Get over it. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people develop mental health issues from trauma of their childhood that they never dealt with. True. Because nobody wants to sit down and talk to another individual about trauma they face as a child, mm-hmm. whether it be some type of abuse, sexual, or physical, emotional. It's nobody wants to sit, sit down and talk about that. Now more people are doing it because now you, you hear about mental health everywhere mm-hmm. when you have, Things that happen big in the and big in the country or big in society, some people say, "Well, he has a mental health issue." Then you get people thinking like, "Maybe he does have a mental health issue." But then you're like, "Well, what mental health issue do you have to just go and commit a mass shooting?" Mm. Because mental health is breaking down to anxiety, bipolar, schizoaffective, which is schizophrenic, plus mood disorder the the schizophrenic expect i'm sorry it affects the mood you have schizophrenia you have manic depression you Mm -hmm. have major depression then you go into things like mood disorders um i said bipolar um and things like that and then people are now getting more becoming more aware of what these things are actually are Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, inside the church, a lot of people deal with those things. They just don't want to put their business out like that. And trust plays a big part in that. Mm -hmm. Right. Because you feel like someone will use that, use that against you if you may have a disagreement or they'll just say something. And people don't have the understanding that it's more to it than just calling a person crazy. Like like in a mental health field, that's one of the worst things you can call and patient or a client or individual is crazy mm-hmm. you can't even like let's say we laugh we say oh you're crazy when i work in the state hospital in virginia you cannot say that like like if a client if a patient <clears> says <throat> something funny you'd be like oh man you're so crazy they, they, they'll start to freak out and say he's calling me crazy and you'll be like no i'm just saying i'm just <laughs> laughing <with you." laughs> right but they will take it as you're really calling me calling me crazy Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like we don't we can't call people like call them a schizophrenic. That's a no no in the field of mental health. Right. A lot of people haven't been educated on this type of stuff, and especially in the church. It's just like pray. Well, Go ahead. 
No, no. So, like, my my question is, is um, uh, hello, hey, William, William is saying hey. hey um, Kenita McGee. Um, yeah, so the thing is, and <laughs> what people don't realize is oftentimes in the church, uh -huh. the church contributes yes, to, to your mental health. Your mental health. Yeah, right. Because literally, it literally plays. And I never thought of it as a mental health thing because mental health is often taken as a word that is like, you know, they, oh, you automatically crazy or you got <laughs> yeah. some going on upstairs. Yeah. But mental health does play into things like that are considered more simple, like anxiety, like depression, yeah. things like that. And I suffered drastically with yeah. depression anxiety yeah. because of people in the church yeah. let's just put that out there yeah. people in the church made me think that every little thing i do every little thing i say do is going to send me to hell right. so my anxiety came from oh gosh what did i say today what did i do today what did i say oh god's going to send me to hell you know it literally became something that was of torment to me to mm -hmm. the point where it built me an anxiety disorder wow. and i'm not always blaming it on the the people in the church right but it honestly is their ignorance as well. Yeah. You know, th there has to be some type of balance mm -hmm. in the fact of, oh, you know, the way that people come across people when it comes to different things. Oh, well, you ain't got no business. Oh, let me just say this one. You're too blessed to be stressed and too anointed <laughs> to be disappointed. That's true. That's true. That is what what? What do you mean? I'm right, still blessed right. and stressed. I ain't blessed in every area of my life. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> to the point where there ain't gonna be some stress. You're tripping. Right. right. Um, Ness, what are your comments? <sighs> <laughs> uh, you know, um, actually right after college, I ended up working um in the mental health field for um quite a few years. Um, and you know, you, you saw different walks of life and I, and I will say this when it comes to our topic in the black community, mm. I think that we take mental health sometime as a joke. Yep. Um, and the reason why I say that is because, I mean, you know, we've been places and, oh, that that's uncle so-and-so they mm -hmm. act like that, you know, mm -hmm. don't pay them no mind. Right. That's, that's aunt so-and-so, you know? And so for years we, we've ignored this mm -hmm. elephant in the room of what's the root of why this person is acting the way that they're acting, yep. you know? And so we've just kind of skated around those things. And so what we see is when our children get into school and the, and the teachers are saying, Hey, you know, there's a disconnect, something's going on. The first mm -hmm. thing we holler, ain't nothing wrong with my child, my yeah. child, you know, because we haven't dealt with that. We knew something was going on, you know, but we, we chose to ignore it. But I think when it comes to the black community, we ignore the signs. We ignore the symptoms. And like you said, Leslie, most of us have been, oh, that's just the devil. You know, you just need to pray about it and mm -hmm. keep it moving. OK, but if you feeling like this every day, you know, that depression is coming on every day. You having those maybe even suicidal thoughts. Yeah. Every day. But somebody's telling you that they're, you know, to pray or you going to what they call holy night and, and they they dousing you oh, with yes. the water and the oil. And, uh, and Terry service. Service. <laughs> Terry <laughs> service. <laughs> Terry service. You know, and yeah. so which is true because I actually, you know, had a friend who talked about, you know, how her mom, you know, actually took her to one of those services because she kept telling her mom, you know, mom, I got you know, all these different, you know, voices going on in my head. Mm -hmm. Mom took her to holy night. You know, they they thought, okay, we slapped this oil on your head and, you know, cast out the demons and stuff and she would be all right when she didn't. What mm -hmm. happens is those those issues developed as she became an adult and got even more serious. Yeah. Kind of had to take that step on her own to get her own personal help. So I think when it comes to the church, it goes back um, to what Harrell was saying, people are not educated. And then you have sometimes where people just will not acknowledge it mm -hmm. because we have this stigma where you're a Christian. So Christian and mental health, they yeah. should reside in the same place as how people yeah. feel. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, so we just we just bypass that stuff. So when it comes to the church, you know, and I was thinking about it, and it's interesting that you, you know, this question came up because I was actually thinking about this. Like, why don't we have more segments on mental health in church? Yeah. You know, like right now that, you know, this extreme pandemic is going on. It has affected people in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And I haven't seen a lot of services that even talk about the mental health you know, that people are experiencing right That's now. True. You That's know, true. So I think that in the black community, we, we, we definitely need to wake up and realize, you know, that these things need to be addressed.
Right. And I often think it also is taken as a weakness in a sense. Like yeah. we in the black community, we already are, you know, have our issues and, and different things that we always try to be a step ahead. And right. it's like, oh, ain't nobody gonna call me crazy because then it's gonna take me 15 steps back. Right. Yeah. So we often bring that as like a defense mechanism. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the comments was from summer summer said too blessed to be stressed what yes summer <laughs> that is literally one of our the sayings that uh, we have heard throughout the years that you yeah. are too blessed to be stressed and too anointed to be disappointed i think but i got you on a card somewhere i'm looking at my office like somebody sent me a card that says <laughs> and, see, and that's the thing though it's like we, we, we hop on these like um these phrases and different yeah. things that ain't even scripture nope. like it ain't even scripture like i never will forget y'all that time that i found out that cleanliness is next to godliness not even in the bible <laughs> that ain't, it, there ain't no scripture no matter how clean you be you'll never be next to god never <laughs> exactly. never it won't happen exactly oh, let's talk word. okay so the next point I'm going to get y'all's perspective on, we'll go with Harrell and then Ness. Um, what about the the point that's made is there's shame in talking to other, talking to someone other than God or a pastor. What do you think of that Harrell and then Ness, your turn? Um, like again with that, that goes back to lack of education. God puts doctors on earth. He puts therapists, counselors on earth. Let's say you're sick. And you need to go see a doctor. And you say, no, I'm just going to pray about it. Your condition gets worse. Well, you're not using wisdom and understanding. Mm -hmm. That's just like with mental health. If you continue to say, I'm going to pray about it, I'm pray about it. And we know that God can wipe the problem away. We know that. Right. We understand that. Mm -hmm. but he, he can move mental health professionals out of the way. He can heal everybody that's mentally ill. We understand that. But until that happens, you have people out here that are fully invested in helping people with mental health issues. And I have an individual I work with now. He had to check himself into the hospital because he was feeling suicidal. Mm. He said, I'm so glad I did that because I did that in May. Let me see. We are in the middle, basically the middle of September. He's going on three months clean of drugs and alcohol. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. And he has a long history of using drugs prior since he was like, as a kid, he's um, he's in his 40, like 41, 42 now. And so he was saying, I'm so glad I did that because now I go to AA, I have a sponsor and I'm and I'm clean. And he was right. he was like, if I didn't do this, mm -hmm. it's no telling what I would have done. I would still be using. I'll still be like and and, and, and and he's a oh, he's a great guy. He's one of the most compliant and well invested clients I have. But he said, it's no telling what I would be doing. I would still trying to sneak around and use this drug and then come back and lie and tell you I'm not when I know I am, but right. I was able to get help. I started going to AA. I got a sponsor. I'm going on three months clean. You come see me. You do activities with me. Give me um understanding the information. And he said, I'm glad I did this because I've tried to kill myself plenty of times. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is because he told me I have so much anxiety and I have so much fear of being a weak man if I talk mm. to somebody about my wow. issues. Mm -hmm. Because for years, people have used things against me because I'm, because I'm a little different. And these are his exact words. And that is the that, that is one of the main things that we deal with. It, 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 right. It's the fear of being looked down upon. It's the fear yep. of, oh, you're weak. You're not praying enough. Well, you can pray 24 hours. You're still going to need something. That's right. Yep. That's right. And people say too blessed to be stressed. You can be blessed with a million dollars. It's still something's going to stress you out. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Still want to mess you up. So people have to. What, what a lot of people got to do is first think about what they're saying because you could be saying this to somebody who was sexually assaulted as a kid, mm -hmm. and then and, and in their mind right now, they're still struggling and dealing with that because they're like. Let's just say a female. She's like, I, I'll never trust another man because of what happened to me. And then she has, you know, and, and, and that's her right to feel that way. But she can meet somebody like a counselor or somebody that she trusts and talk to them. And they can kind of coach them and help them along the way. That's what people need more. People need more people 
not looking at them and saying, you're not praying enough. You're not in service enough. Right. You need to come and get the demon released out of you. But all of it isn't demons. You, don't get me wrong. You you have some spirits on earth and we know that, but we know that. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. some people, some people are normal people. Let's just like us. They go to church. They pray to do it, do it all they have to do for the Lord, mm -hmm. but they're still struggling mentally and they don't know how to get over it because the church is saying, Oh, you, you don't, girl, you don't need to do that. You, you just come to the, you just come to the sister service and we're going to sit down and talk about it. <laughs> I don't want to be, right. yeah, right. be giving, I don't want to be spilling my business out to you. And then if I don't do something, you like you and such and such somewhere talking about me. And that's going to, that's going to make my issues even worse. Yeah, right? it's right. true. And people yeah. just got to be mindful. It's 2020. People are still calling people crazy, still saying people are not doing this or doing that. But people are trying to do the best they can do. And they still are lacking something mentally. It's right. true. Ness, what's your take on this? I think that, um, you know, we, we have to get to a place, um, like I said, you know, understanding the seriousness of it. And I think that we have to um, also break those generational cy cycles and mm -hmm. those generational words of advice, yeah, <laughs> you exactly. know, we received, you know, from, you know, grandma and uh, not saying that, you know, they, they come with plenty of wisdom. I'm not not yeah. because I've gained some right. great understanding from them. Right. But I think sometimes, and, and I mean, and I don't know if you about you guys, but you sit back and you think about a saying that somebody said in your family, you think like, man, that's jacked up. Like, yeah. what about where did y'all get that from? Like, <laughs> you know, that, that, that don't sound, that don't make, make any sense. But because mm -hmm. people kept on passing it along and along, you know, mm -hmm. and I think sometimes we have to stop the book and cut things off. Like, no, yeah. I'm not going to continue this trend. I'm not going to continue this cycle, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. because you have to realize something is really taking place. And so I think we have to, you know, we have to sometimes break out the norm and it's hard to do. You yeah. know, sometimes with your families and stuff, because, you know, when, when we shift to take a different course than, than what we're supposed to, you know, it kind of puts people in an awkward position. But I, I think you have to break those cycles. Yeah. It's so true. And William's comment is, um, it amazes me how the black church will encourage blood pressure, cholesterol, BMI levels, et cetera, but not promote mental health. Mental yeah. health issues have just as much of an effect on the body as previously listed. Yes, so true, William. Like, yep. Cause we'll have, right. we'll have a right. bake sale and sell some dinners in a minute. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But won't like, <laughs> give somebody some some education or, or give somebody a referral to go deal yeah. with what they're dealing with. Yes. And, and, yeah. and like like um mental health, like people with mental health issues, did you know tobacco companies target them because they know that they have anxiety, they mm -hmm. stressed out, they have they have all these psychotic disorders, and they and, and they'll feel like, oh, I can just relax for a while and take and smoke me a couple cigarettes. And cigarette tobacco companies target the mental health community. Like so true. Yeah. I've been yep. in mental health for 12 years. Wow. All my wherever I work, clients that they all they 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 worried about cigarettes, a monthly check, and, and something to eat. That's all right. they're concerned That's about. All. They can care less if I'm coming to see them three or four times a week, breaking my neck to get there, rushing to get there, thinking because they're not answering the phone and you thinking something wrong with them, and they're just sitting in the house playing video games. And yeah. they're just sitting in yeah. the house eating, they're sitting in the right. house comfortable. Mm -hmm. Because they got what they, they what, what they were worried about, what they want, they got that. Yeah. And then it's like us as professionals, you trying to get there and do all you need, do all you can for them, and they just like, oh, I'm fine. There's no need to worry about me. You just like, right. well, answer the phone. Now. I don't know what's going on with you. I, right. You know, you're under my care. I'm worried about you. Right. And and then you just have, like I said, tobacco companies. They target those people because they know that's what they really care about. Well, and see, and that's the thing that gets me like with any of this, there's always what we call a quick fix. Yeah. And the church is the same difference. Oh, like, yeah. oh, um, Definitely. you know, oh, you're depressed. Well, well, pray, ask the Lord, go for prayer, go for prayer. Let them pray for you. Let them lay hands. Yeah. Um, or, oh, you, you know, I, um, 
I'm, I'm, I just feel so anxious and so upset. Well, the Bible say be anxious for nothing and sin not, you know, whatever, you know, um, you know, all these things, these scriptures that they try to band aid over yes. deep situations. So literally, if I literally cut an artery right now and it's spewing out blood and I try to put a little band aid on it, it's not going to help. Not gonna it's help. not going to make a difference. Right. So like that band aid that we constantly try to put on it in the church is not a form of healing. No. It's just a, what we want to be a temporary fix is we honestly, let's be for real. Don't want to be bothered with other people's problems. Oh, no, absolutely not. Right. You know, absolutely. we want it. We want it, This is to be a, this is a holy place of God. This yeah. is a right. holy place. <laughs> we don't bring all that up in here. Not in here. You won't. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Which brings me to my next point. Which is um, often, dis- you know, said you ain't got m- mental health issues. You just letting that devil use you, or the devil use you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ness, what do you think on this one? Um, like, like I said, it, it, it's those sayings that we get from folks, like uh-huh. and, you know, like at, at the end of the day, you know, if if you got different people talking to you in your head, um, on a regular basis, <laughs> um, I mean, really, like, I don't think it's the devil. I think <laughs> we need to make a appointment. Let's get an evaluation, right? To see what's going on. If you have to, and, and here's the other stigma. Um, about and it goes back to what William was saying. Like in the churches, you know, we 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 pump up a whole lot of stuff, but when it comes to mental health, and especially when it comes to medication, oh no, I'm not taking I'm not taking no meds. But we taking high blood pressure meds. We taking yep. medication for our skin to tighten up our skin. You know, all these different things. You know, but when it comes to mental health, no, I'm not taking that medication. I'm not. You know, <laughs> right. so, uh, we, we have these different areas, and I think that you know. Uh, Use wisdom. Use right mm-hmm. common sense. If, if it's a constant trend that you're feeling some type of way, or you're just not feeling right within yourself, go get the help. I tell people all the time: there are so many ways and services out here, free. Some of them are free. Yeah, you know, yeah. to get the help you need. And that's the other issue: is, is you know, people think, oh, well, I don't have the money to go and talk to somebody. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a lot of places out here that offer stuff on a sliding scale. You mm-hmm. know. Um, mm-hmm. All these different avenues, but I yeah. think when we use these these things, the devil, the devil using you, honey, the devil been using you for ten years. Right. You know, we, right. we got to do something about that. You know, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And Harrell, what's your comment on this? Um, it's kind of referring about what Nessa said. It's it's the same thing. People, people for years have just been prone to have their mind a certain way, right? And, and they're just like. Whatever you do, or, or go, go on, like they say, a shrink. Or, or go on and talk to a shrink. That ain't going to do nothing. Your problems still want to be there. We understand that. Mm-hmm. But that, but that's not the point. The point is to get ongoing um, interventions, reinforcements to help you deal, right. learn, learn how to cope with the mental issue you're going with. Right. A, a lot of, a lot of my clients that are diagnosed with SMI, which we call serious mental, seriously mental issues, illnesses. I'm sorry. It's no like cure for ta- for for somebody that's paranoid schizophrenic or somebody that's having some hallucinations. You give them medications, the medications help. It it, it does something to the mind to help you lessen or, or, or it well what, what the voices are. It'll help lessen the amount of voices you hear. But it but it's no cure for it. You just right. have to learn coping skills to deal right. with it, so you don't go out and harm and harm someone or harm yourself. Or do something destructive. You just have to learn coping skills that act that you can utilize to actually work for you to help you remain calm, to remain to help you stay in a good state. You know. Right. And, and I and, love how you said that. Yeah. I don't want to cut you off. You fine. Like I don't love how you said that because honestly. <laughs> Even even if something not as so much as you know as as big as paranoid schizophrenia or any of that, yeah. anxiety and depression to me, just just is my opinion, yeah. is not curable in my my mind. I know that sounds weird. Mm-hmm. Yes, God is a healer. God is a miracle worker. Don't get me wrong, but my anxiety and my depression never really actually goes away. Right. I have learned how to cope with it. Mm-hmm. I have learned how to get through it. And now that I have eliminated all that stuff, the church people be saying to me, and I'm like, get on my face. Yeah. Me and God, the Lord has talked to me directly. I know what I know when I know and whatever. Yeah. And my anxiety and depression has gotten better. 
Yeah. But as far as the church goes, but at the same time, it doesn't go away, in my opinion. It, you, right. you learn coping skills right. and coping mechanisms because honestly, I'm telling you, still at night sometimes I break out in sweats from my anxiety, worried about stuff that is like, what? And yeah. then I wake up the next morning and I'm like, what was I even so upset yeah. about? Right. But it literally is something that, hey, okay, thank you, Lord, this came to me. So you know how, like, you know, people, like, praying that they get rich and that they don't be poor. Right. But at the same time, when Lord, when they get some money, they forget about God. Yeah. So, you know, they stay in that poor or that humble situation so right. that God, so they need God. So they have a reason to go to God. Right. My anxiety and my depression, nobody but God can yeah. help me get through it when I have reached that high level. Yeah. But at the same time, I have learned coping mechanisms to help me get through it. Right. So I like that Harrell had said there's not really a cure because yeah. we always want to be healed. Yeah. You know, that wilt thou be made whole situation. Yeah, I do right. want to be made whole. But if it's not God's will, it's not going to happen. Right. And a lot of times we're just, you know, we're just suppressing suppressing it. It and getting by and yeah. like you said it's so true when it comes to anxiety because i deal with it too um and, and and depression i think you know we have to get to that point where we recognize what our triggers are what what mm -hmm. what puts us in that state of mind and so forth and so like you said you know you're going to have those moments um but i think that you know, with, with sayings like, you know, the devil, you know, you just let the devil use you. It's one of those things of people just trying to put that Band-Aid over a big issue and, yeah. and keep it moving and not addressing it, you know. That's true. Well, real quick, we want to show you guys um, a video, um, real quick video about a pastor who is actually pretty well known. And he was a big advocate for mental health mm -hmm. and yet committed suicide. Wow. All right. So I'm going to share this with you all for just a second. Okay. Wow. Okay, so that like right there, like says it all, <laughs> you know, like a pastor who was advocating for his people to get the mental health that they need mm -hmm. was at the same time not Good taking problem, care of himself. Yeah. So see, that's where the problem comes in a lot of times is we as people of God mm -hmm. in the church, whether you want to be, if you don't even want to take the title people of God or just say just being a good person. Yeah. Okay. If you are a good person and you love service and giving to people, sometimes you give more than you physically can handle. Yeah. Like right. you give so much every time it's always giving and there's nothing receiving, yeah. you know, it's so essential to implement that self care in the midst of taking care of everybody else. Um, and so that's a lot of times where that ends up getting to be an issue is when you don't take care of yourself, or you don't look out for yourself or you're always giving. And that's the thing with people in the church. Like we're always givers. And sometimes we give so much that we have nothing left to give ourselves. Yeah. 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 So true. Yeah. I mean, it's just literally the way it is. Yeah. And I think like, I, um, with that, I think being, 
um, a pastor or, you know, different different roles that we play, you know, depending on our pr professions. Um, I think, you know, all of us experience that burnout, that mm -hmm. burnout point where you're just truly burnt out um, yeah. because um, and it's, it's like I said, this is all coming around because I just had this conversation uh, with a friend today um, about kind of like the way I had been feeling. And so uh, they were like, you know, strong people need people too. Yep. And so I think we forget about that because for me, I'm the person I'm, I'm listening to everybody else's issues. I'm taking and sometimes taking them on when I shouldn't be, you know what I mean? Right. So right. Um, I think that you can get, you. oh, I know you can get overloaded, you know, mm -hmm. with that. And for this pastor, you know, right there, having to listen um, to people and the hardships and different things that they're going through, you know, you have to have somebody else, you know, that you can talk to and get these things out to. And I think there, there also might be that shame in there too, because people feel like I have this title, so I can't confide into somebody else. Like I'm a, I'm a, I'm a minister or I'm a bishop. I'm an apostle. I, I'm mm -hmm. a teacher. I'm a whatever. So I'm supposed to be able to handle this. I'm supposed to be able to take on this weight. Mm -hmm. But right. in re actuality, it's I need somebody who can listen to me. I need somebody who can, you know, I can pour into and they, and they can talk me through those things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's very unfortunate um, to see that happen with somebody um like that and have to go through that um but i yeah. think that we have to realize you know at the end of the day we have to find somebody an outlet um that we can talk to um you know about the things that we're experiencing through the day because it becomes a lot it's true it honestly is the truth harold do you have any comments on that on that video yeah i was i was thinking about that i was just like well if, if he was a mega church pastor mm -hmm. you imagine the phone calls he got all right. throughout the night on right. top of dealing with his own issues. And I don't know what caused the suicide, but it had to be something that he was dealing with and he didn't want to, maybe he didn't want to tell people in fear of losing members. I don't know, right. but it was something he was dealing with for him to do that on top of being an advocate, on top of probably being there for everybody else. Something may have just tweaked in his brain and said, that your, your situation isn't going to get better. Kill yourself. Yeah, and, and and then if you're not, even if you're a pastor, even if you can't fight off some things that the devil throws at you, or some things that you never were able to get help for as a youth or as you were younger, or just even as an adult, you're just like, well, maybe this isn't going to get any better. Just let me just be done with it. Right. And um, you know. We, we we don't know why he did it, but it was very sad and unfortunate. And that's why people have to put they have to use empathy in these type of situations. You have to put yourself in a and let a pastor like him. You gotta put yourself in his shoes. He's already dealing with a lot trying to have a mm -hmm. mental church. And you just gotta that's one of the main things in mental health is empathy. Like um my, my first job coming out of college in mental health was dealing with um juvenile sex offenders. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, that's a hard one. Yeah, and um, we we had like an eight step program, and one of the um, one of the bullets was, you know, empathy, and they and, and they had to, you know, prove that they have empathy for their victims. They they right. they, they they had to prove that because by them not proving that they had empathy for their victims, they just they pre they they're pretty sick. It's just like. Like, like you watch Criminal Minds, you see some of the stories. Oh, there, yeah. You realize these are real people that are walking around around us, and they're just doing these things. They have no empathy because they 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 have some type of issue going on mentally, and they and they're lacking something, and that's how they get power and control is by doing something outrageous or doing something crazy, right? And not showing that empathy for one another, and that's what the church lacks with people with mental health issues. They go straight to the, they hit them straight in the throat and say, you got a demon. You mm -hmm. ain't praying, you ain't fasting enough. Mm -hmm. yep. not, not realizing this person has nobody to turn to. So let me go talk to my brother or sister at church. And and, right. and, and, and when I when I, when I I spill to you what I'm going through, what I dealt with as a child, trauma I dealt with, PTSD, and the first thing you tell me, I need to go pray more 
and I need to, and I, and, and, and I got a demon in me. That's why so many people shy away from mental health in church and, and, and they don't talk about it because mm-hmm. people are going to be like, the first thing, like if, if, if you ain't educated on it, that's the first thing you're going to say. Well, you need to pray more. Yeah. Or you 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 like you you you're empty. You're not praying. You're not fast. You're not reading your scriptures. When you could be doing all those things, mm-hmm. and you still and not, you still is not doing anything. Yeah, yeah, and, and you still hurting internally. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and people have to understand like mental health issues is different than someone that's intellectually disabled. Now, if you're intellectually disabled, you, you were pretty much born that way, and mm-hmm. and and that and that and, and and that's like more dealing with learning and understanding. But you mm-hmm. have people that have mental health issues that can function just like just, a, person that, yeah. Yeah, just yeah. like a regular person. And right. believe it or not, we all deal with anxiety on a normal basis. It's, it, it's something, I could be wrong, but it's something everybody is worried about and has anxiety about that. It's not going to work out. It's not going to go as planned. At some point in the time during the day or the year or the month, we all deal with depression, which is like a lingering sadness. We all deal with that. Yeah. But it's just that we can... Some people can function better. That, that's just like an alcoholic. They'll be like they're, they're they're alcohol dependent. Pretty much saying that they can't do their normal routine. They can't go to work unless they get that drink. You have some people that deal with mental health issues that just keep going and keep going. But even this little segment right here is good because somebody can be looking and hearing this and be like, "Well, I need to go get help. I'm not exactly. scared anymore. Yeah, I'm not scared anymore. It's, it's I'm, normal. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not worried about what people want to think about me." I need help. This is about me being healthy for my family, just for mm-hmm. myself, my kids, my church, my community. I want to be healthy so I can help somebody. And people right. have to get the they have to get the um a better understanding of that because it doesn't make it doesn't make you a bad person that you seek out for treatment or seek out for help because right. it's there. I had a friend tell me, um, how you gonna believe how you gonna believe in Jesus, but then you but then you go see a therapist. Well, or you go see a counselor. I mean, Luke was a chief physician, which a chief physician covers all aspects of, you know, health and wellness or whatever. So mm-hmm. it's there. Like, yes, Jesus is there. He is there for us to talk to him about everything. And we know that he's going to keep our problems to him. He's going to help us. But it's also good to go talk to somebody. Just like it's we're sitting true. here talking. Somebody can be blessed through this. Seven discussion months. exactly yeah. and then that's the thing that's the whole point of leslie said what is to uh, create an opportunity for there to be that discussion about things that people may have questions about that they don't want the whole world to know they got a question about right. yeah. and right. so you know and especially in the church when it's like often like you shy away from certain things or you have that fear component to ask a question you don't have that here yeah so and and that's why you know part of the reason i created this um But yeah, so also, um, is there any other questions or any comments from the audience at all? If so, go ahead and leave your comment now. Um, We're going to go ahead and start to wrap up. Um, Don't want to keep y'all from y'all families too long, Ness and and Hero. Um, (laughs) But yeah, so I don't think there's any more comments popping up. But I just do want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to Nessia and Harrell for joining me tonight. This has been truly helpful. I'm sure it's helped somebody. (laughs) Even if it's just one person, hey, God already left. He left the 99 to go get the one. So. Yeah, and I'm just. Uh, but before we want to go, I I just want to encourage people to um, take the time. You know, take the time to assess what's going on around you. There's a lot going on. Um, you know, and if you're feeling, you know, various ways, you know, seek the help. Get the help that you need. You know, there's no shame in that. There's no shame in wanting to get better and make things better. You know, for your life. You know, so it's true. Out there. That is the best decision I made is to figure out what works for me. Because what, yep. what works for me isn't necessarily working for everybody right. in the church or in my circle or in my friend group. Right. But it does work for me. So yep. that's what I needed to do for me. And that is there's nothing at all to be ashamed about that. Because what is different or what may be new, unique doesn't make it wrong. It's right. just your approach. Right. That's it. Right. Approach is everything. Yeah. <laughs>